Hey guys, welcome back to Digital Gigger. In my last video, I talked about how I made money on Amazon during these very difficult times. I put a lot of work into um, putting new listings on Amazon and I did really well in the last month with my Amazon account, seller's account. And this week, I actually got a deactivation notice from Amazon and I'm gonna get into what happened and how I overcame it and some stuff that you guys should know in case it happens. So to you. about a week ago, uh, I received this notice from Amazon that my account had been deactivated. Luckily, I've been selling for a very long time online through different platforms and I know to document everything and make sure that I'm following terms and conditions and that I'm replying to these companies with the most respect for what they do because they're protecting their business, their platform from all sorts of different things and they want to make sure people are following the rules and I understand that and I get that. So when Amazon sent me this notice saying that my account had been deactivated, that meant I lost access to the funds that I had in my account, which had, at this point were substantial and that I couldn't sell anything until it was resolved. So I started to gather my documentation and upload it to Amazon. So the first set of documents that I sent to Amazon uh, didn't resolve the issue. They needed more information in order for me to continue to sell on the platform or either let me know that I can't sell on there anymore. So the so one of the brands of the products that I was selling on Amazon sent an infringement notice. So that meant that I had to prove to Amazon that I was selling the legitimate product from this brand and that I was getting it from a wholesaler that is authorized to sell the product uh, to other people and eventually to marketplaces like Amazon. So luckily I had documentations from that supplier. I had everything I needed to uh, prove that I was legitimate and I wasn't selling anything that I shouldn't be selling on Amazon. But it wasn't just about having the proof of the um, transactions and all the stuff that I had been doing with this wholesaler. He was also understanding what Amazon had written in their request. So it wasn't just the products that were, they were, you know, they were questioning if they were infringed. They were asking for specific information. So before I answered anything else, after my second uh, round, I went online and I started to do some research and I realized that people were saying uh, that you have to be very clear that you formulate some sort of action plan with Amazon so that they know that you uh, are going to follow their rules and aren't going to be a troublesome seller in the future. So I put together a letter and put a lot of effort in writing everything down, where I got the supplies from, what I was doing, how I understood what they were asking of me, and what we can do to go further and reactivate the account. If they wanted me to take those listings down and never sell that product again, that was okay with me. I just wanted to get back on the platform. So once I was able to get all that information to Amazon, it was a waiting game. So I waited for quite a few days and I was losing money. Every single day it was a couple hundred dollars that I was losing in sales because I couldn't get back onto the platform. So eventually I got an email back from Amazon that my account was reactivated and uh, that everything was okay again. But that would never have happened if I hadn't documented everything, replied in the most professional manner that I could possibly do on their platform. I would never get back onto Amazon and I would have lost being able to sell on a platform that's one of the biggest marketplaces on the planet. You always wanna make sure that you're dealing with legitimate companies. You always wanna make sure that Amazon, if they ever question you on any product, that you have a reliable source of where you got it. Now, a lot of you guys resell things that you purchase in retail stores and that's okay. But if you ever get questioned by Amazon on a certain product and you're showing that receipt for, you know, Walmart or wherever you got that product from, Sometimes that might not fly because Amazon is expecting it to be from a wholesaler or some other ch supply chain, uh, not just that one off that you got from Walmart. So Amazon is expecting that you um, give them a lot of information about where you're getting your products. And sometimes they might not be 100% sold on the fact that you purchased it at Walmart and resold it on Amazon. So they wanna see sort of a more professional business uh, behind your listings and that's why it's important that you kind of understand when you're selling things on Amazon if that ever happens you have to have as much proof as possible of where you got the item and be honest with them 
and say, you know, I didn't know, I didn't realize that it was an issue for me to sell uh, this one-off product on your marketplace. I'll never do that again kind of thing. And slap yourself on the hand and hope for the best and that you get your account reactivated. So there are professional services that can work with people to get their accounts reactivated on Amazon, but sometimes you can do it on your own if you take the time to read what they've asked you, reply as best you can, send as many documents as you can to support your case. And for most of the time, people at Amazon will understand the situation and see that you're trying to meet their requirements and will work with you to resolve the issue and get you back on the platform. So luckily, I got the email, I'm back on the platform, I can sell again, I started getting some sales today. So everything is good, but it took that uh, scare for me to realize that uh, you never want to put your eggs in one basket. You want to have multiple sources, multiple sources of income, because if anything happens, you don't want to be left with no sources uh, to make income. So we're seeing that with what's going on with Uber and Lyft. A lot of people can't drive for these platforms right now they can't make money. So if you have backup plans, then at least you have other sources of income that you can work with while things are being worked out. So I hope that makes sense. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the little like button and the notification bell so you know when the next video goes up. And we'll talk about more cool stuff as we deal with what's going on in the world right now. Um, there's a whole bunch of videos that I'm working on because I am at home most of the time right now. I'm just getting some stuff from the grocery store. But other than that, we'll be talking about other ways to make money from home while we're going through what we're going through right now. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day, guys. Take care.